Nigeria is set to spend a sum of 37 billion naira on renovation of the National Assembly complex in the coming year. And as the United States President Donald J. Trump faces impeachment, we wonder, are there any lessons for our Nigerian leaders? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakal. Thirty-seven billion naira has been allocated uh, to the renovation of the National Assembly complex in just recently signed 2020 budget. Now, even if many Nigerians believe it, this is outrageous, uh, it's been reported that it was built with seven billion naira. The deputy whip of the Senate, Sabi Abdullahi, has said that the proposed thirty-seven billion naira uh, the National Assembly is using for renovation is long overdue. The sum, which is equivalent to over $100 million is higher than the sum which has been allocated to repair federal roads in Nigeria. Well, joining us to discuss this, I have in the studio, Obi Ajewa. She is a legal practitioner. Obi, it's good to have you join us in the this studio. Is, uh, glad to be here once more. 37 billion naira. Mm. Even a lot more money than allocation for federal roads. And mm. we know we have no roads in Nigeria. Mm. Even though the um, Minister for Works has said that uh, the roads are not bad, you know, we can manage it. Mm. <laughs> But when you heard the figure, what came to your mind first? I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> because really? I said, this is the theater of absurdity again. This is, this is just not on. It's not on. We should do something to elevate people's suffering. And now we're just spending it all on an edifice, which was just built maybe 20 years ago. And over the years, they've been appropriating monies for maintenance, for extension, and this and that. So when they built the phase three, couldn't they have renovated the other ones? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, the details of the spending um, was given uh, on Monday by the Senate mm -hmm. President, Ahmed Lawan. Um, they, they plan to spend the equivalent of $100 million on repairing just one building. Um, at a time, key infrastructure where hospitals and schools across the country remain in terrible shape. I'm just, I'm trying to put it side by side. Mm. Um, a lot of Nigerians feel that this is just preposterous. I mean, I have been to this hallowed chambers. They don't look bad at all. Mm. And I'm thinking, if no matter how bad things are, 37 billion, what exactly are we fixing? Are we bringing it down and building a new one, or what exactly? Again, we have the federal hospitals, the teaching hospitals. I was in Luz the other day. Terrible shape. Same thing for all the teaching hospitals. And this is a chamber that doesn't sit every other day. Do we learn to prioritize in this country? Or, or maybe this, do you think this is a bigger priority than our hospitals or schools. It, is, it shows you the mindset of the people we spent billions electing. It shows you that they are a, they are a set of I people, I, 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 me, me, me people, not what would, what would be beneficial for these people. When you look, I took time to go back and study about this, and I saw that over, this, over the past um, few years, they've been taking money, appropriating monies for renovation work for things to, to be done in that hallowed chamber. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand what they are doing that they are now going to send 37 billion. Are they knocking down the whole building or what are they doing? Well, um, the National Assembly um, is going to have FEMA, um, with they're saddled with the responsibility mm -hmm. of, you know, working on the roads. Uh, but we hear that they have paid the H&H, &H, an inter-business service, 50 million naira for the renovation of the committee rooms. This is out of the 30 mm -hmm. billion. Um, this is now, notwithstanding, another painting of the committee rooms project, which is worth 46 million naira for just painting, um, which was awarded to Jack Soul Nigeria Limited. Now, the lower chamber, that's the House of Reps, um, also awarded 39 million naira um, for the replacement of public address system in its committee rooms uh, to DX Associates Limited, uh, just to name a few things. 
And I don't want to act like I have ever been in a building business or I've been an architect mm -hmm. or an engineer to know how much it would cost to buy paint, to paint committee rooms. But 46 million naira. I'm thinking about how many communities need water as we speak. That's what I'm saying. They, they, don't, they don't have human sympathy. They don't have, they don't, they don't, they don't care about the masses because if they did, how much is a, 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 a drum of paint? How much is it? Most 20,000, 30,000. That's May, it. Maybe the, the text coat that we need has to be even, even foreign. The, even the, the highest grade. I don't know, of, I'm just saying. Even the highest grade of paint is not up to 50,000 per, per, per drum. And, you, you know, again, it the sizes of the committee rooms might determine how much you need, how much paint you need. I am still saying that they don't have milk of human kindness. If they really, you know, maybe one day we should all drag them out and let them walk on the streets with us. Go to take them to Makoko, take them to Ajegunle, take them to Ikeja, take them to Jakonde, take them to places and then, they, then after they've been through that experience, they will not, they will not go with all their armor things. No, they will one on one take them on, on foot. When, when we get to Makoko, they pack their, their cars and then they walk into Makoko. See what people are going through and then let me see if they will go back and still have the effort to do this. Let's talk about accountability mm. because a lot of money is keeping earmarked mm. for all kinds of projects, especially white elephant projects mm. like this. Of course, they would tell you this is constitutional, this has been approved, it's gone through the process, mm. and Mr. President has approved this. But who accounts for all of these monies, if they were put to proper use or not? You see, everything goes through a chain of um, bidding and uh, what uh, whatnot. And then, from what I know, the three companies bid for a particular project. And then the most favorable, not the, not, the least, not the least expensive, the most favorable because it could be least expensive and do rubbish, or it could be more as most expensive and still do rubbish. You look at the expertise and do this and everything is all, it's, in, it's that. But like I always say, like I always say, we have a lot of laws, we have a lot of procedures, but we don't adhere to them. Hmm. Because, I'm asking this question because, as a journalist, you need to keep probing. Mm. These monies, yes, have gone through the proper channels of being processed, mm. but when it's done, can we account for it? We're seeing on paper 39 million for replacement of public address system, mm. 46 million for paint, I mean, 50 million for the renovation of committee rooms. Will we get as it's been made public to us, will the aftermath be made public to the people? How do we ask for this information? How do we have people to, and not necessarily oversee, but can we have people watch the process happen in order to get accountability? Let's not forget, we're, we're borrowing to fund our budgets. We're borrowing more and more monies, and yet we're not able to give account of the monies that have been used before now, how do we, the people, come in here? Because it's, I see us complaining on social media, but that's not enough, is it? Social media is a first step because we all know that social media hits certain places that um, ordinarily people will not get to know. But the second step is talk to your representative. Tell them how you feel and then still go forward. There are NGOs that are monitoring like Serap or whatnot. There are NGOs that are monitoring it. But you see, um, there, there are different stages. One, those, um, what, what parameters did they use before they could award one, painting one room 50 million? What parameters? What, what are the terms or conditions? What manner of paint? We have to see all that to be able to know if we are getting a good deal. What is the size of the room? Those are all the things we have to look at before we know if we're getting a good deal or not. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about other projects that might be um, at the losing end. We have classrooms that 
I went to Kaduna State recently um, and I saw the state in which children have to study. Mm -hmm. There are no roofs. Um, the UNICEF managed at some point to give them uh, some canopies to cover on the roofs, mm -hmm. but they're not enough because these children are many. And thanks to the Kaduna State Government, uh, they're trying to get children to come to school by introducing feeding. Mm -hmm. So these Madri children are all flooding into schools. Mm -hmm. I went to a community somewhere close to the FCT, just close to Abuja FCT. And they do have posters of members of House of Representatives and the Senate, but there is no water, clean water in that area. I'm sure if I go back there, it's still the same thing. What happens to all of those places at the detriment of us beautifying a chambers where people sit maybe four times or three times in a week? It is priority. That is their priority because um, they are the What about person. us, the people? We're supposed to be priority. We voted them into office. Where do we come in? And when do we get to be served? We are still going back to that same old argument. We are serving, we are being served to our reps. And it is for us to prod our reps and say, this is what we want. Let me ask you a question. Do you know who your rep is? Oh, I do. And how, how, many, how many times do you, do you talk to him? Oh, uh -huh. I didn't vote for him. Uh -huh. But, but it, whether you voted on him is... I was here. Bad. I was here interviewing you on election day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't vote for him. So. No, but I know him. No, forget that. Whether you voted for him or not is irrelevant. What is relevant now is that he's representing the constituency where you have. And have you had cause to go up to him and say, look, I don't like this. Well, he doesn't pick my calls. Maybe he's scared of me. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, but yes, there are people who do not know the people who represent them. But who's to be blamed in this case? Let us, let us blame ourselves. Let's blame the government. Let's blame that uh, organization. Blame the government? Let's blame that organization that comes alive every four years. National Orientation Agency. Let's blame them. They especially. Because they should be educating people. There are a lot of illiterates. There are a lot what about of... the political parties? They, don't they have a role in voter education? Is it just to come and field candidates? They also have a role to play, if don't you they? Are in, if, you are in, if you join a party, you're in the world. From, from the world, you move up, you move up. You start knowing what is going on. But you cannot be outside and be shouting where you're not inside knowing what is going on. The only, the only way you can affect true change is to be there and stand out for your integrity, stand out for your character. But if you're outside and saying, um, this, 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 they are thieves, they are thieves. Yes, because you elected the thieves. Why don't you go there and make a difference inside? Okay. So Nigerians, maybe on social media, were trying to make a difference. Do you see the hues and the cries of Nigerians? Because we have reactions, some reactions. We're going to put it up in a bit um, of Nigerians on social media about the amount of money. But do you think the federal government is going to do anything or the National Assembly is going to do anything about reducing this amount because of the reactions that they're getting? Where were we when they were going through the stages in, in the House of Assembly? Where were we? Where were we when, because every, every MDA, every parastata has to come and defend their budget. If you knew you did not like this budget, you would have gone there on that day and, or talked to your representative and say, we don't want this, let them prune this down. I have a question that might not sit well with a lot of people, but how many Nigerians are interested or even aware that they should be participating in these kind of things, or asking questions. That is why we have the government we have. Because we are so laid back. We are so lackadaisical in our, in our thinking and in our approach. Once something hits the front burner, once it, it goes, once the hue and the cry goes down. Now, have, has anyone ever gone to find out what happened to that Navy captain? What happened to that kidnapper that was arrested? Has anyone done a follow-up? Has any journalist gone to do that to say, where, where are these people? What is happening to them? Because we've not heard anything. Has anybody? No. 
So, so they sit there doing anything they want, and we are here complaining when we have the means to make the difference. When we want to make the difference, we get up and know that it's our right, it's our money they're spending, and talk to them. We have seen that some of the things they, they did that we, we shouted, they, they stepped back. So it is time for us to take, to rise up and, and not, not go and start a revolution, no. No, you can, you can have a sort of, you can, you can change, does not need revolution. Change means two or three people of a, a like mind coming together to say, no, we don't want this. And, and putting, and doing it silently without causing a, without bringing about a revolution. Now, let's go back to what the Senate president said about the renovations of the, um, National Assembly with 37 billion naira. Now, I want to quote him directly. He said, since the takeover of the complex, there was never, ever, any major rehabilitation or renovation 20 years ago. So in every budget that we put out, are there no allocations whatsoever to the maintenance and upkeep? Or is there a difference between maintenance, upkeep, and rehabilitation? Or do we need to visit the dictionary to understand the difference? Rehabilitation means overhauling. Maintenance means keeping it in good shape. And what's the other one? Mm, upkeep. Upkeep. I think that's another way for maintenance. If I'm, except if I'm wrong, I believe some years back a, 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 a paltry sum of 40 billion was allocated for that National Assembly. I think under Minister Diosho, I'm not sure. I can't. I can't think right. I, I read on it. I read up. Read it up today. And so, 40 billion and 37 billion, their brothers and sisters. So what? What did you do with 40 billion that you now need 37 billion for it? You see, this is a waste. People, the Nigerians are suffering. Nigerians are going through a lot, and we have people that we elected under our own sweat, under uh, under rain, under beating, under fighting. Under gone, after all, rivers was like a war zone. And they now go there and they are now appropriating 37 billion. If they, if they took one, one, health, one, one general hospital in each, in each, local, in each, in each region mm -hmm. and say, okay, let us upgrade it. Let us have um, uh, an up-to-date um, cancer, cancer unit. Let us have a kidney dialysis unit. They do kidney, they do kidney transplant successfully in Nigeria. Let us do this, let us do that. Then we can, and if, if you have, if you have a, a hospital that is giving you kidney treatment, you rather spend Naira in Nigeria than travel to India or wherever for kidney transplant. But they never see it that way. And they don't know it's a source of revenue for the government. There, you know, sometimes when you talk about these things, um, people who support uh, politicians would say, oh, well, you don't expect them to know everything. How many people have gone to them to say, oh, this hospital needs this, or this community needs that? So again, uh, the pen points to us, the electorate. Remember I said, we are to blame. Um, whenever anything happens to me, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hold anybody responsible. The responsibility is on me. And until we Nigerians realize that whatever we're seeing is what we're giving them. Garbage in, garbage out. When people that ought to be there, people that know what to do, will now come in and brave the electoral system. After all, we have a Shei Makinde, which everybody, which everybody is screaming about, and I'm praying that he doesn't, he doesn't stop. Hmm. Now we we have those reactions from Nigerians uh, on social media as to the 37 billion naira for National Assembly renovation while our Nigerian roads repairs gets less. Well, Patrick here on Twitter says, your birthday present to citizens is to plunge them into debt. And this is to the president. Quid pro quo with National Assembly, approve my loan request and I will share some of the money with you. Will you give 37 billion to renovate? Enough money to build one uh, enough money to build a new one, he says. And he says, happy birthday to the president. So mm -hmm. this is a question to the president. Um, Ibrahim Ahmed here says, how much was used to construct the National Assembly complex, Abinisho? No explanation would stand to justify a renovation cost of 37 billion naira, while millions of our citizens are still uh, lacking access to basic health and primary education. And he says, may the Lord redeem us. Okay. 
Uh, more reactions. Uh, Nasiruddin O on Twitter says, to be frank, the National Assembly doesn't need that much for renovations, not even half of the proposed amount. You can always seek for renovation only when the hospitals, schools and roads in this country are in better conditions. What we have now aren't near to be called good. Kalade Harold on Twitter again here says, the National Assembly is a combination of both tendencies, isn't it? Are the PDP members there kicking against it? We know how loud the dramatic or how loud and dramatic they can be when they're against whatever. But why not this time, especially as an opposition with the highest number of members ever in the House? Uh, a friend of mine in one of my forums said, when you people talk about APC and PDP, there's no difference between them. There's no difference. And, and I, I don't want to say, I don't want to use the word he used for them because it may be termed hate speech. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we don't want to die. No, we don't want to die. We don't want to die. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go back to some of those messages and we'll keep taking them. Uh, let's see if we can take a few more before we wrap it, wrap it up. Ka Kairat here says, I told a friend that despite the fact that I like Buhari, but worse national... Uh, that despite I like Buhari, but the worst National Assembly in this country will be this Lawan and Baja regime. You, you will think they are doing the country a favor, but at the end you will realize they have hurt the whole country. Okay, and that's from Kairat. Um, Rilas Burner here says, the people that said the Eighth Assembly hindered Buhari from working. Hope you all are happy now with this kind of scratch my back, I scratch yours, Buhari and the National Assembly are doing now. Any government with no separation of powers is doomed. Uh, well, well, we'll put a pin on that one. Uh, it, it seems like Nigerians are not even having it at all. I'm sure that there are a few people who are su in support of this. But again, I want to ask Nigerians, how long will we keep you know, groaning and moaning and complaining on social media and forgetting that we have a role to play. Do you think, do you see us getting out of this quagmire anytime soon? Plus the fact that we're very indebted, our debt. Uh, it's, 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 it's spiraling. Yeah. It's spiraling. Um, it's getting out of control. Firstly, we are the architects of our misfortune. Those people that ought to run are not running because they, they feel that um, there are a lot of things they can't do in the electoral system through, through the political system. So how do we sanitize the system? Because, you know, it seems a bit too dirty for some people to get into the mud, but how do we make the mud nice enough for those people to get involved in? You see, our poster child governor now is Sheyi Makinde. Everybody is talking about him. If Sheyi Makinde can do it, he's turning around um, Oyo State. The, the same way Sheyi Makinde came is the same way others will brave it and come. We need people that are like um, Trump, self-sufficient in money, that they will not need anybody to, to give them terms and conditions, which is what Mackinde is, is, is riding on. He's like his own man. He did a lot of, he did a lot of um, agreements. He's kept to his own part of the bag. But it's not like a case where you want to appoint your commissioners, then somebody will give you a list of, maybe there are 20 some commissioners, somebody will give you a list of 15 or 18 and tell you, I'm the one sponsoring you. you okay, you take two, you take two. And those people, because, they're, because you don't have control over them, they can just come there and just be signing away um, allocation and not doing any work. And you cannot do anything because you want a second term and you don't want whoever put you there, whoever financed you, to be angry. Oh, well, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and our eyes on the National Assembly. Of course, renovation with 37 billion naira and see how that goes. Thank you very much. Obi Ajegbo is a lawyer, but she's not going anywhere. We will come back and talk about what's happening in the U.S. Congress. Yes, President Trump is, as we speak, the third president in this, the history of the United States to be impeached. But are there lessons for our Nigerian leaders to learn from it? We'll be back after this break.